which people that live in Uganda have no power, that all the power within the country is controlled by one family. That's where all our problems come from. Capture of the state by one family using the force of arms, using guns. Gun rule is the problem because, as you all hear, the whole country is crying of huge amounts of money that is taken in taxes, people being taxed. People work hard, whatever lands in their pocket immediately flies out through taxes. And yet, services are never delivered. So, if you want a service, you must again look for more money if there is any still remaining in your pocket to get a service. That is the fundamental problem that we all face. And in order for this gunman or gun rule to maintain itself for this long, they use four main uh, tools. One is to cause fear amongst people. And the people of Minyoro have been terrorized right from the time of colonial administration. They have still been terrorized in all the successive uh, governments. So actually you see when you are moving around and as I moved around town today, I could see that fear. You see somebody wanting to wave at you, but is checking whether anybody is looking at him or her. Or when he's raised his, his hand and he sees someone, he doesn't know he touches his head. Uh, so the fear factor is one that we must push back against. Secondly, is the bribery of leaders. Because those who have controlled our money, our wealth, use that wealth to compromise leaders who would lead people to free themselves. And, and that is why here we had strong leaders in Unyoro. You know, people like Atugonza, who was the mayor of this town at some stage. Uh, we had people uh, like uh, uh, Mr. Baguma. We had people like Waviona and others who were strong leaders but all of those were compromised now you can never hear them Kiza this man who has been a minister for Unyoro Kiza was our activist uh, you know he was uh, uh, then uh, bribed to join the NRM they gave him a job what you know um, so that is the second problem of getting leaders many, many leaders so that even if they bribe with you, the struggle continues. The third problem is the propaganda of the government. Uh, you know, painting themselves white when they are black. And that is because we have not been countering enough to, to, to inform people about their lies. So people, once they hear lies only, they start believing them as truth. This is why today I was telling them that, you know, they don't sit there thinking that PDM, which they are now singing about, parish development model, that it is going, it's just another propaganda uh, campaign that people are going to get out of poverty because of PDM. Nothing, nothing can happen. It's just like, a, it's like a it's like a Mioga, and all other propaganda campaigns they have had. So we have to counter that campaign uh, of propaganda, which tells lies about what the government is doing and tells lies about us, what we are doing, what we are about. So that is why we are now moving to counter those. The last thing we must counter is to divide those whom they have turned into slaves. Divide the slaves and turn them against each other. Divide and rule. And this is why you hear in our message that this struggle is not an FDC struggle. 
it's a struggle of the oppressed. Whether you are FDC, whether you are DP, UPC, uh, NUP, uh, anti, whatever party you are, whatever color you put on, it's a, we are all captives, we are all slaves. So our message is we must come together and fight for our freedom. And uh, uh, maybe also in this message, we are pointing out that because the institutions are completely captured, it is another propaganda to, for people to say that they should wait for an election before they cause change. Because the elections are completely controlled by the same people who captured the country. So we want people to organize themselves and we take back our country whether there is an election or not. We cannot wait for two years as people are dying of poverty, of lack of jobs, of what? Land grabbing, you know, all this land they are grabbing in Bunyoro and so on and so forth. You know, Bunyoro has every reason to struggle. I think now it's the only region, for example, without a university. I was, uh, as I was driving around uh, the town today, I saw Guru University in, in Hoima. So there is a university for Acholi, there is a university in Mbarara, there is Busoga University, there is Teso University, it is the the Banyoro who have, and they will not get until they stand up and fight. You see? Uh, denying you knowledge is keeping you uh, completely unable to get out of poverty and out of the control of those who deny you the education. So, we are going to be uh, talking to the people of Bunyoro and organizing with their leaders to cause, to resist. Not just to wait for an election, but this is a resistance struggle. We want a revolution in this country. It is a revolution which will help the country. Not just a change of leaders that you are you know, Museven has left and there is another one. When the same system remains of sucking money from everybody using force. So that is what we are up to. We, we are organizing the people of Uganda. It's a legitimate struggle. It's legal. It's provided for under our constitution and Article 3 of the constitution. So we are, that's, and that's why we, we we campaign in broad daylight. It's not a, a, a subversive struggle. It's a struggle by people who have a right to struggle for their country. And that's what we shall be doing. Maybe Dr. Last from you would be.